Hello and welcome to Policy Bazaar. I'm Arjun Bhagat. Now there are times when you've taken a product of your choice but realize that it's important to reinforce the policy or investment as the case may be. Now a few years back you would have had to buy additional policies but now the scenario has changed in the case of life insurance. You can reinforce your cover by using riders. So what are riders? Well, they are basically add-on or additional benefits that you can opt for along with any existing life insurance policy at a very low cost. To help us understand the purpose of riders and the various options to choose from, we have with us Yashish Dhaya, CEO and founder of Policy Bazaar. Welcome to the show, Yashish. Now, um, you know, define for us what riders are because that's a term that insurance companies are using a lot these days. So, see, riders uh, basically complete your policy. So, your standalone policy has certain limitations, certain, uh, let's say, abrupt edges, which the rider polishes off. You cannot have a cost of more than 30% on riders. That's a limitation of a rider. But let me, give, let me give an example because these just seem to be very theoretical statements. So suppose somebody had a child insurance plan and suppose uh, some misfortune happens. Now, the payment from the child insurance plan will be made at the end of the term. Right. But who will keep paying the premium because the policy has to be kept alive? So if you don't have a rider called the waiver of premium, then the demand is that the payment for that policy keep being made. So waiver of premium comes in as a rider, which means that from the point of the misfortune, no more payments need to be made. That completes the policy because realistically, the family has gone through some stress and financial stress and they cannot put that, they'll find it difficult to put that money. In addition to that, you may have a family income benefit because since the family has got into the situation, instead of paying 1 lakh rupees, you not just not pay, but you start getting 1 lakh rupees every year. That becomes a family income benefit rider. So as you can see, these riders, complete the that particular insurance plan similarly the other riders that kind of complete other insurance plans but so let's get into the specifics of riders what sure. kind of uh, riders are there and uh, how should we look at take sure so let's even take the simplest of plans so I'll, I'll, I'll just give examples and kind of clarify all the riders let's take even the simplest of plan like a term insurance plan now a term insurance plan only pays out in the case of death but what happens if a disability happens if a accident happens Death has not happened, but a disability has happened, which has a very, very significant financial implication as well. So for that, you have a disability rider. Both partial and permanent disabilities get covered under disability riders and personal accident policies. What if there is a critical illness? The person is still alive, but they've had cancer or they've had uh, uh, some major heart disease and a significant cost is required. Uh, plus their income is obviously not there. So in a way, you need the critical illness and the personal accident riders along with the term plan. Earlier I had given the ex example of a child plan where you require the waiver of premium rider or you require the family income benefit rider. So riders essentially come in two formats. One is a particular event has happened and that event is not the same as what you are covered in the base policy. Right. But the rider starts making some payouts to ease the situation. The second kind of rider is, it is the base policy, the main misfortune has happened, but the policy itself, its own costs are reduced. So that is where the uh, two riders which we spoke about, one being the waiver of premium and the second being the family income benefit, these two can come in and uh, support the family in that situation. So what about other riders? Um, you'd mentioned critical illness. You'd critical illness, personal disability. accident. The disability. Can we go uh, into some of those specifics then? Yeah, so the way a critical illness rider works, there are uh, uh, 35 diseases which are classified as major diseases. And, uh, uh, you know, five of them account for about 90% of the costs. And, uh, and one more question can that be linked to, say, a term plan or a, a yeah, simple Yeah, absolutely. It can absolutely. Be. It can be bought along with a term plan, it can be bought along with a health plan. But along with a term plan, there's a limitation. You can only spend 30% on these products. So let me give an, a, a simple illustration which will help. So you know, you're having a cake and you put some cherries and some uh, you know, oranges on it. That makes it tastier. That is how riders are. But if you want to have fruit, if you want to get the nutrition of fruit, you don't go for those little cherries and the little uh, you know, uh, orange pieces that are kept on top of the cake. You, you buy the orange and you eat the orange. So uh, fundamentally, a, a rider has a benefit which is limited to the policy itself, but it does not have a very 
high value which as a standalone policy would have. So if you want the real benefit, you would have to go for the standalone policy. But let's talk about these four or five riders. So critical illness, those uh, five major diseases, uh, you know, heart related, brain related, uh, kidneys related, uh, these, these diseases, they can have major expenses. So a critical illness plan comes in and pays out in case any of these events occur. The personal accident and disability covers, they are essentially to take care of death and disability, which can be temporary or permanent, and it can be total or partial. Right. And all of these come under these particular plans. Uh, so there is obviously loss of income, and there is some uh, expense to uh, put the person right. Uh, those uh, are uh, taken into account. And of course, you have uh, the riders which we've already spoken about, which is the family income benefit and the waiver of premium, which come into uh, which come in handy in almost any plan. Whether you whether one has taken a ULIP, a person has taken a ULIP for 25, 30 years with a plan that after 25, 30 years, a certain amount of corpus will be created. Right. Misfortune happens. But if the misfortune happens, that whole dream, that whole plan is gone. And that is where the rider kicks in. Because the rider is not like a base term plan, but what it will do is it will support this particular policy stay alive. So, without so what payments. you're actually saying is that when you're taking a policy, you need to really comprehensively study that and say, all right, how do I reinforce this particular policy? Is that what you're saying? It is one of the more expensive decisions you're going to make in your life. As it is. As yeah. it is, because, uh, and it's one of the very important decisions. See, you only buy insurance when uh, you're trying to protect something. And hence, you obviously need to understand what are you trying to protect. Uh, insurance is not from an investment perspective. That is only the low-cost ULIPs are perhaps the only vehicle that you can use from an investment perspective, uh, which compare well with mutual funds, etc. But otherwise, none of the insurance products are investment products. They are protection products, and you need to see them as protection products. And uh, it's obvious that one needs to fully appreciate what one is getting into. Also, from a cost perspective, these are not small costs. today. One and a half lakh rupees has been allowed, uh, you know, under ADC. You've got uh, ATD, which allows a further thirty-five thousand rupees. So you've got about one lakh eighty-five thousand rupees a year that you can invest in these products, uh, which is a which is a significant amount. You know, if you think about it, the average car costs about five to seven lakh rupees, and right. a person probably buys their car, a family probably buys their car once in three five years. So it's actually more expensive than the individual's car. But it's you know, we in a, in the decision of a car, the whole family gets involved. But in the decision of insurance, uh, somebody just tells you, sign we, we, here. We get a little squeamish about yeah, uh, exactly, that prospect. Exactly. Right. So, right. so let's, uh, let's talk about, I mean, you made the point that, you know, um, as far as the main policy, that, that's the cake. And then you took the example of riders as, you yeah. know, um, I guess the add-on flavors to it. Um, let's uh, talk about, um, uh, you know, riders versus uh, standalone policies. Sure. And so, so how do you actually distinguish and how do you actually make that decision and say, all right, a this is a, a standalone policy, even though it's offered as a rider, I'd rather take it as a standalone. Yeah. I mean, how do you make those decisions? And also talk about um, the cost factors. Do, you, do I actually save by buying a rider vis-a-vis -a, -vis a standalone policy? So m most of the time, the standalone policy will actually be far more useful. Um, and it will, so le let me again start with examples. So waiver of premium, and family income benefit, those two which basically take care of the cost of the pol running the policy, you can't really buy them standalone. In a sense, uh, they have to be linked to the policy, right? So that, that, that those pieces you can definitely buy with the policy. Now, when you're talking about personal accident rider or critical illness rider, remember, these are very serious issues. They need to be addressed. They need to be addressed through standalone policies. So it's like a doctor says, eat apples uh, or eat some fruit to get your vi vi vitamins. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, you know you put some fruit on a cake and have it. Right. Uh, that that fruit on the cake is just to make the cake tastier. It's not to give you the nutrition. So the nutrition really comes from eating the fruit itself, and that's exactly how it would be. The standalone policies are uh, for a critical illness or a personal accident. I would always suggest taking a standalone policy and thinking about what you are buying. Uh, there are lots of options out there. Uh, thinking about how long you will have this policy for, how long you would need it for, what kind of cover you would have how the amount would be paid. There are various policies that pay uh, either in one go. There are some policies that pay. See, a critical illness policy pays once. But there are policies that can pay up to three times. So 
because one critical illness does not mean that the other critical illnesses will never happen. Right. So, uh, you know, there, there, are, there, are, there are all kinds of policies out there that one needs to uh, think okay. about. When one looks at a health insurance policy, you know, there are riders like top-ups and super top-ups. They can be bought standalone also. And I think they can be quite useful standalone, specifically if somebody has a company policy, if somebody has an insurance policy from the uh, company, which covers, let's say, 1 lakh to 3 lakh rupees is what most of the uh, company insurance policies cover. In that the case, they can take a top up and increase their cover all the way to 10 lakhs or 25 lakhs at a marginal cost. Now, there is no catch here. The simple thing is, claims beyond 3 lakhs are very uncommon. Right. So giving you a cover from 3 lakhs to 10 lakhs is actually not very expensive for the com company because the chances of it occurring are very low. So the burden on your pocket is also very low. But in case that unfortunate event happens where the medical cost does go up to let's say 7 lakh rupees or 10 lakh rupees, then the super top up will take care of it and hence the consumer benefit is very high. So the consumer should definitely take this. So. You know, riders, I think buying them on a standalone basis right. makes a lot of sense. What about the tax benefits? Tax benefit levels, uh, the um, uh, limits have gone up to 1,50,000. Uh, how does a consumer benefit by buying more life insurance policies um, and riders and other such things? So both life insurance policies along with riders and uh, standalone plans are covered under the, uh, the same investment uh, process that exists. So earlier it was 1 lakh rupees, now it's been increased to 1.5 lakh rupees. That automatically gives consumers another 50,000 to invest. Now, my only suggestion to consumers as they have this 50,000 for the first time is uh, please look at plans which are useful to you. Uh, term plans, health insurance plans. Health insurance has got a separate uh, budget altogether. Which is which about 25,000. It's, it's 15,000 for the individual. And then with the family. And 20,000 rupees for any uh, person, senior citizen above uh, 65 years. So many people have parents or grandparents above 65. If you buy health insurance for them, that is tax deductible. So while you'd be paying 20,000, you would only be paying 14,000 because you get a 30% tax break if you're in the 30% tax bracket. Right. So overall, you can get a benefit of up to 30%. And, and, you could, and that is the one plan which you can buy for seniors and get the tax benefit for yourselves. So this tax benefit piece has increased. But instead of buying the same plans again, it would help if the consumers just thought about it and bought term plans or any of these riders on a standalone basis. So they bought standalone policies for critical illness, personal accident. Or they thought about a decent pension plan, it will really help them. Right, and they're all covered under the, this tax bracket. They're all covered under the tax bracket, under the same tax bracket. So all the life insurance policies are covered under uh, up to the 1 lakh, uh, 50, uh, 1, 000, 1 lakh 50 thousand rupees. Now life insurance, you can get critical illness, personal accident, uh, the pension plans, uh, the term plans, all of this can come under and the child plans, they can all come under that. As far as the health plans are concerned, you can get them both from life and general insurance companies. And depending on which one you buy it from, you can qualify for ADC or ATD. And that provides you up to 35,000, 15,000 for the individual. As you said, 35,000. Right. Well, it's time for consumer questions. Uh, Saurabh Shukla has written to us. Uh, he said in February 2013, uh, he paid approximately 1,99,999 as annual premium for a policy by Reliance Life. After three days, uh, he issued another check of 1 lakh to the insurance agent on a promise of an 18% return. Then in April, um, he again uh, called me, the agent that is, and uh, for a payment of 1 lakh rupees on a promise of 21% return. Um, he said uh, he realized uh, that this was a case of mis-selling. He says he's been fighting the case uh, for the last 11 months, but Reliance Life has denied taking any action against the people concerned. He says, I have a lot of evidence to prove a case of cheating, mis-selling, uh, as the case may be. He asks what action he can take against the agents and the company. Uh, he says he's be been getting calls from unknown people. Um, so, in a situation like that, uh, Vyashish, what does a consumer do? See, first of all, a consumer should not have been this. I, I hate to use the term, but you know. Gullible, would you say? 18%, who gives you 18% guaranteed returns? When a bank cannot provide it, how can anybody provide it? Right. So, nobody can provide guaranteed 18% returns. Yes, the stock markets have provided 13 to 17% returns for a 35 year period consistently. On every 10-year period, you would got 13 to 17% return. So stock markets are a good, but that's not a guaranteed return. So anybody who says guaranteed return, 18%, obviously is the case. And, the, and there are RBI guidelines against doing that. There, and are, so, there, so are, there are a whole lot of guidelines, but it's also sense because right. you cannot get it. It's not feasible. You cannot get, if the FD is giving you 9%, that is the guaranteed return. Right. 
even corporate bonds which say we'll give you 11% 13% come with a risk with a caveat the risk yeah. is that that company has to pay it back what if the company does not pay it back it's a company it's right. a limited liability company right so fds are the only product that come close to a guaranteed return so that that gullibility i think the consumer needs to walk away from hey I he, he shouldn't demand more than 8 9% because that's not feasible in the in the current scenario you cannot get a return more than your fd from any product in a guaranteed manner okay that's number one number two now that this has happened and you have been if if this is the information that you're providing is true you have obviously been cheated kindly write to the ceo of reliance life and uh, i know they're a very you know responsive company they would uh, definitely respond and try and sort this out if that if you do not hear anything please write to the ird and eventually if you don't hear from the ird you can go to the ombudsman and all but you know i would say write to the ird they have a very good grievance cell uh, grievance redressal cell which uh, automatically makes sure that every complaint uh, gets handled and if you don't hear from there as well then uh, you do have a court case here because uh, clearly if uh, somebody is telling you 18% guaranteed returns and 3 days later comes and tells you 21% guaranteed returns uh, that is a case of cheating there's there's no doubt about it All right, we've got Dinesh Ahuja from Bangalore. He says, "I'm 45 years old. I want to buy a term insurance plan which uh, pays back." Uh, he talks about Tata AIA, um, which says he, uh, they promise returns in uh, its new online term pa plan. Uh, please advise. Uh, so, see, uh, please be very careful. Don't fall for any missile here. Uh, there is a term plan and there's a term return on premium plan, and these are two separate plans. a term return on premium plan will typically be about 2 to 3 times more expensive than a term plan a term plan will not pay you back the premium you have paid in and a term return on premium plan will pay you back the return, the premium you have paid in and it will pay it back at the end of the term mathematically speaking the term with any kind of fd or any kind of low cost ulip etc is a far better investment than the trop but psychologically speaking i think uh, for people who will sleep well uh that they will get their money's back uh i think please go ahead and the trop is a pretty good option there right uh, we've got uh, priya kansal uh, from mumbai uh, she asks can i take a medi claim plan for my father who's uh, 70 years old and mother 65 uh, and uh, says that uh, the mother has no medical history father had a paralysis attack 3 to 4 years back so uh, see her father uh, should go for a senior citizen plan there are quite a few of them uh star uh, red carpet is one particular plan that does uh, accommodate senior citizens with some pre existing diseases however there are certain diseases like cancer etc which cannot be existing at that point there are five six diseases uh which uh, you may you may want to check so if they can get this particular plan you should take it there is a copay in this copay means whenever a claim happens about 20 to 50% of the claim would also be settled by your father or by yourselves and the remaining would be paid by the company but it's a good option to take specifically post paralysis uh, if your mother does not have any uh, uh, medical history whatsoever uh, th in that situation she should go for not a senior citizen plan but for a normal uh, health insurance plan she may she would have to undertake medicals uh, which should not be a problem if she is uh, fine uh, there are lots of options there uh, ranging from uh, max bupa to cigna to uh, you know obviously star health apollo religare health reliance health you've got you got a ton of options out there uh, look at the options and you know choose a plan that uh, works best for you make sure that the plan has got lifelong renewability which pretty much all plans have now uh, also uh, you know just ensure that uh, there is no claims based loading because uh, if claims happen that is not your fault uh, you know you wasn't know. wasn't this an area which was till very recently very neglected uh, senior citizens medical plans around them yes yes but now you've got lots of companies uh who are providing uh policies which can be bought pretty much any time 80 years 85 years you can buy them all the way so religare and max bupa uh they are providing you plans and there is the a way. tax incentive as you explained and there is a tax incentive so if the children are buying for their parents up to 20000 rupees is a tax break as well so i think uh we we are we are uh, well down the path where uh, age based coverage is not a problem however if somebody's already had cancer or somebody's already had a particular disease which is likely to recur uh then companies obviously don't want to take on that risk because it's no longer a risk it's a known cost so i think the the indian consumer needs to move away from that uh, thought process where they would take a policy for a known cost right i think you ought to take a policy well before that 
uh, before it becomes a known cost, that is when it's a risk. All right, uh, Yashish, next question. We've got uh, from Sagar Kolkata, aged 26. Uh, he has an annual income of 6 lakhs. He says, I bought uh, an LIC Jeevan Saral in uh, 2013. He says the agent uh, says that he will get 7 lakhs after 10 years, uh, but it is not written in the bond papers. Please guide. He asks, uh, he says, the term it's a term uh, for 25 years with an annual premium of 36,000. Does so that make the, sense? If the, if the cover is for 25 years, he would get paid at the end of the term. Uh, I do not see why he would get paid uh, 7 lakhs at the end of 10 years. Uh, at the end of the term, he will get paid about 10 lakh rupees. So it's, it's a case of uh, mis-selling or uh, misunderstanding? Mis it's, it's a case of miscommunication. So if you looked at the illustration, the illustration will not have a significant payout at the 10-year point. That can only happen in the case of a misfortune. So if... Uh, you know, uh, the policy is, is bought for the purpose of a, of a life cover. And if uh, death happens, then of course uh, the payouts are there. But uh, otherwise the policy will pay at the end of the term. Uh, but, it won't but this is something that we've seen a lot where uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, I was, uh, yeah, this the was the claim. Is, the answer is Shouldn't very people really say, all right, where is it written before you end up buying the policy and then realizing that, you know, I don't have anything. People, in are, people are saying two things. One, it's complicated. We don't know where it is, right? And I agree with them. I have not been in the insurance industry. I've been for the last six years, but before that, I was not in the insurance industry. And uh, people don't know what policies mean. But they can take a simple answer from a simple person. I'm just giving that answer. For investments, do not get into traditional plans because they're not good investments. You've got fixed deposits. Plus, there is no plan out there which can pay you more than 6.2%. 6, well, that's a simple enough answer. Because that's the market reality. That's the reality. If there is a plan, anybody can challenge me and, you know, right. anybody can challenge me and just say that, no, here is a plan which actually pays 9%. Right, right. Yeah, you know, now. there is no plan. Right. So why, why are people investing? I don't know. Okay, so the advice you're giving is buy uh, plans with your eyes wide open and study those plans there. But uh, that's all the time that we have in this episode of Policy Bazaar. But do write to us at ask.policybazaar.com. Tweet us at Twitter at policybazaar underscore in. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.